This week, Dave's all new with Danny DeVito, Ellen DeGeneres, Alec Baldwin, and Stupid Human Tricks. Monday, don't miss Ray Romano and space tourist Dennis Tito. Now your local news. More people than ever could be hitting the lake this summer, and the Coast Guard says it's ready for the call. A Texas judge has a very visual approach to keeping tabs on sex offenders. And Tulane fights under the lights to push ahead in the Conference USA tournament. Night Watch starts right after the Powerball. Tonight, you could multiply your Powerball play. Hi, everybody. Mike Pace here tonight. Nearly $44 million are estimated jackpot. And remember, for an extra dollar, you can multiply any cash prize except the jackpot up to five times. There it was tonight, number two. The multiplier is two. Now, let's play Powerball. Good luck. First ball tonight is 49, number 49, and then 47. To win the jackpot, correctly match five white balls plus the red Powerball. We have number 10. Nearly $44 million on the line. There is six. Don't forget that multiplier, number two. And the last white ball is 21. And here is tonight's Powerball, number two. Quick review, 49, 47, 10, 6, and 21. The Powerball is two, and the multiplier is two. Good night, and good luck. WWL-TV, Channel 4, New Orleans. Louisiana's news leader. Channel 4's Eyewitness News. Good evening, I'm Mike Hoss. And I'm Rachel McNeil. Summer may still officially be a month away, but local boaters are getting a head start. Cleaner water mixed with hot weather means the lake will be a crowded spot for recreation. And with the fun comes safety concerns for the Coast Guard. Josh McKelvin hits the water with the people who watch over it. Five feet, start! Start clear! They patrol Lake Pontchartrain like the state police patrol the highways. Coming up! But out on the water, they don't need probable cause to pull you over. The first thing they're going to look for are obvious violations. With summer arriving and Lake Pontchartrain healthier than it has been in a long time, more boaters than ever will likely be taking advantage. And that means the Coast Guard is expecting a busy season. You're on scene with a vessel right now, is that correct? 47 <laughs> Since this is safe boating week, the patrols are stepping up a bit, ensuring boaters and jet skiers have proper safety equipment and paperwork needed to be on the lake. Not to mention, keep a close watch out for reckless activity. A lot, a lot of people just know two speeds, stop and full speed, okay? There's no reason for that. And um, it can just be like a highway. If you're, if you're going on a slough and you're, you're, you're tearing down the slough fast, uh, we see collisions out here all the time. Alcohol is another problem, and the Coast Guard warns that the same DUI rules on land apply on the water. Um, and that'll actually go on your driving record, okay? It's illegal, um, and it's, it's very, very unsafe. But along with policing the waters, the Coast Guard and its auxiliary units are there to help. This weekend, they offered free boat inspections to anyone who wanted one. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Fired. Yeah, okay, well, okay. Uh, I need to see your life jackets. I guess you could say it's preventative maintenance. We like to get out there and board as many people as we possibly can. Uh, cause we'd rather do the law enforcement than the search and rescue, you know, caused by something illegal. Okay. You're good to go. At first, it may seem like a lot of hoops to jump through, but experienced boaters appreciate the effort. Safety's paramount, number one. Josh McKelvin, Channel 4 Eyewitness News Nightwatch. For more information on boating guidelines and safety requirements, you can log on to our website at WWLTV.com. A shoplifting call to the Kenner Police Department turned into a dangerous confrontation for one officer earlier tonight. Kenner Police say they responded to a report of shoplifting around 7 o'clock in the 2800 block of Loyola Drive. When police got there, the female suspect drove off, nearly running over one of the officers. Another officer joined the chase and flipped the police cruiser she was driving. She was not hurt. The unidentified female suspect was apprehended later in St. John Parish. She will be charged with attempted murder of a police officer. A New Orleans police officer got quite a scare while off duty in New Orleans East. Officer John Brunette was at his hot, hot, hot rod car show at Lake Forest Plaza this afternoon. Police say he was moving his car out of a trailer when the accelerator stuck and he lost control. The car hit an embankment and flipped over. Officer Brunette broke his wrist in the accident.
Earlier this month, authorities in Texas joined the search for a convicted sex offender accused of a string of kidnappings along the I-10 corridor. Now a judge in Corpus Christi has a new approach to tracking sex criminals. He's ordered 21 convicted sex offenders to place signs in their front yards reading, quote, danger, registered sex offender lives here. He also handed out bumper stickers for offenders to post on their cars. By law, they're required to notify their neighbors in writing. The plan takes it a step further. And after fully considering the protection of the community, I've decided that in certain cases, some of you will be required to post a sign in front of your residence that tells everyone else that you're a sex offender. Criminal defense attorneys call the signs unconstitutional and are considering legal action to block the move. A Utah man convicted of polygamy says he has no plans to give up his multiple marriages. A jury convicted Tom Green of four counts of bigamy in the country's first major polygamy case in nearly 50 years. Jurors also found Green, who is father to 29 children, guilty of one count of failure to pay child support. Green faces 25 years in prison and $25,000 in fines. They broke a barrier at Virginia Military Institute, and today they earned a diploma. The 13 graduates are the first female cadets to survive four years at the previously all-male school. VMI was the last public military institute to accept women and did so only after the U.S. Supreme Court ordered it to do so. Current VMI students say the group brought with them more than just controversy. Do you believe that girls have brought a certain level of maturity to the core and the way it handles itself, its professionalism, and those have been great improvements for the school? I think that the more women that come here, the more men here are going to really realize that girls can do everything that they can. Today's graduates are among the 25 female freshmen who came to VMI in the fall of 1997. Eleven ended up dropping out. In international news, fighting between Israelis and Palestinians has picked up again, this time to the level of warplane attacks. And the Bush administration is calling on both sides to stop the fighting. Kenny Wallace has more on what the White House is considering. More Israeli retaliatory attacks, more bitterness as Palestinians mourn their dead, and more fallout as Arab nations recommend suspending political ties with Israel. Back in Washington, Secretary of State Colin Powell calls for an end to the violence and plans to work the phones this weekend. If there was any solution that I could come up with, any conference or meeting that could be held right away that might move us in such a direction, I would uh, leap at it. Powell, aides say, is looking at the release Monday of a U.S.-sponsored commission report as a possible starting point to reduce tensions. That commission, chaired by former Democratic Senator George Mitchell, finds fault on both sides for the eight-month-old conflict and recommends an immediate halt to the violence and measures to rebuild confidence, including a freeze on any new Israeli settlements, a move Israel vigorously opposes. Meantime, U.S. lawmakers continue to urge the White House to become more active in the Middle East. I hope they will do that because without our leadership, I don't think the violence is going to stop anytime soon. The administration says it is actively engaged publicly and privately, but there is still a perception in the region, observers say, that the Bush White House is taking a hands-off approach. As a consequence, the administration is going to have to be visibly involved in some way, whether it's sending people to the region, inviting leaders to the U.S. What is also needed is a major U.S. action plan, says the former Middle East envoy during the Clinton administration. Working on their own, with some help from us, is not sufficient at this point. So if you're going to transform the situation, I think there's going to have to be some kind of more intensive initiative Another diplomatic move still under consideration is a meeting abroad between Powell and Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. One senior U.S. official saying it depends on whether a meeting is possible and whether it would be useful. The violence in the region, no doubt, likely to play a decisive role. Kelly Wallace, CNN, the White House. In all, 469 Palestinians and more than 80 Israelis have been killed since fighting broke out in the region last September. A four-day ordeal for eight Swiss tourists trapped in a flooded cave is finally over. Dozens of rescue workers on hand broke into rounds of applause as the tourists were pulled from the dark cave in France earlier. Giant pumps and small explosives were used to drain the water from the cave so rescuers could get inside.
They made contact with the group for the first time yesterday, but the high water kept them from getting to them. Investigators trying to identify victims of the Titanic disaster say they've suffered a setback. The samples from two water-damaged graves in Canada did not provide enough material for DNA tests. The graves contain the unidentified bodies of a man and woman who died when the ocean liner sank in 1912. Scientists still hope to get good samples from the bones of a two-year-old boy in a third grave. Relatives of some missing Titanic victims hope investigators can identify the bodies as those of their family members. Is the foot and mouth scare over in Canada? The country has relaxed its restrictions on some imports from the European Union for now. Canada's Food Inspection Agency has lifted the ban on imports of animal and food products from countries that have not heard cases or had cases of foot and mouth. But they will still continue some safety measures at airports for travelers who may be carrying the disease. If you think you're having a stroke, do you know what to do or do you even know the symptoms? Those were just some of the many questions answered at the American Heart Association's annual conference on strokes today. Experts say stroke is the third leading cause of death in New Orleans. But doctors say death or serious injury can be prevented if the proper procedures are taken immediately following a stroke. 911, that's the way to get into the hospital. That don't call your insurance company gatekeeper, don't, don't call your doctor, don't call a friend, don't call your you know, cousin in medical school. Go call 911, get straight to the hospital. Some symptoms to watch out for. If you experience a sudden change in vision, speech, loss of feeling in your arms or legs, an ability to walk straight, or the sudden onset of a headache, you should call 911 immediately. Doctors say there is medication available that will only work if given during the first three hours after the onset of a stroke. Up next, Brad Panovich says a cool front is on its way. We know that's news you'll want to stick around for in his forecast. Plus, teen fans fight it out for tickets to their favorite boy band. They're in line for NSYNC. Then, from pop to the Philharmonic, the LPO closes out its season with a phenomenal performance. Highlights a little later on. Are there foods that can actually help keep cancer at bay? Boy, fruits and vegetables, I wouldn't, you know, the last thing I'd want to put in my mouth is a fruit. You know, give me the, give me the potato chip. Can a change in eating habits even help patients already fighting the disease? You create yourself every day by what you eat. So you are what you eat. Your mom was right. Karen Swenson examines the current crop of findings in An Ounce of Prevention. Monday at 10 on Channel 4. No matter where you are, you can get breaking news with forewarned. Now, Radiophone's alphanumeric paging service is your link to the Eyewitness Newsroom. Get free information on the latest local news. Be advised of traffic emergencies and road closings. And find out quickly when severe weather becomes a threat. Forewarned, an exclusive paging service from Radiophone and WWL-TV. Whether you're a dot com, a non com, a hot mom, whether you got a stockpile or a rock pile, your wild southern soul is about to feel different. Every minute in your Dodge is a minute worth living. A million have switched to Dodge trucks. To switch you, we're offering big cash allowances on RAM or 3.960 month financing that can save over $3,200 on RAM 1500s. Different by a country mile. Looking for a little action this weekend? Andy, take it down. Hey, Turn around! Oh, back off! No! We're gonna make it. Give me strength. Tonight at 11.35 on Channel 4. You've seen them tackle work. Now, four Saints players let you in on where they like to spend time off the field. Watch Living the Life, a special edition of Fourth Down. Sunday at 10.35 on Channel 4. Monday morning, Orleans school officials Ali Tyler and Al Davis will be in talking about the Leaf 21 test scores. Also, we have a play called An Evening with Betsy. Join us Monday. Former Congresswoman and Ambassador to the Vatican, Lindy Boggs, was honored tonight as the Humanitarian of the Year by the American Red Cross. A spokesperson for the Red Cross says Ambassador Boggs was a natural choice for this, their highest honor, citing her years of service to the efforts of the Red Cross and to the community in general. Our own Angela Hill emceed tonight's event. 
Ambassador Boggs says she has received many honors during her illustrious political career, but that tonight's was extremely special because of her feelings for the group paying her tribute. Not only to be so beautifully welcomed home by so many good friends, but also to be honored by an organization that I respect so much and, and, and uh, revere it almost because of the many, many years that uh, I've been associated with it. Ambassador Boggs says it's a great time for her now as she and her TV news daughter, Cokie Roberts, are hitting the university speaking circuit together. Brad, I did my part last week. <laughs> I washed both cars. Now, if that doesn't bring rain in this town, I did my part. I Nothing. don't know. I think we need Nothing. to uh, do a little prayer tomorrow morning to try to get this rain in here. Probably we will see rain by Monday, but tomorrow another day of the scattered variety and very hot weather again. We're going to see temperatures approaching 90 degrees. Take a look at the satellite picture. We'll show you where it is raining and where, well, our future rain chances might come from over the next couple of days. You notice this one spin in the atmosphere here tracking off to the north and east, but this really draws your attention here across the central plains. Huge thunderstorms exploding this evening across Oklahoma and Texas and now heading in to western parts of Arkansas. These are going to clip northern Louisiana and central parts of Mississippi tonight. We have more storms firing up out here. This is a little upper feature here that's really going to bring us our best chance of rain into tomorrow. Take a look at the radar. We'll show you all the rain. Flash flood watch is in effect for pretty much the whole western and central part of Oklahoma as these showers and thunderstorms continue to march off to the east. Another line forming in the panhandle, so a double-barreled area of uh, severe weather tonight affecting the central plains. This low is going to track up to the north and east, but it's eventually going to pull a cold front into our region by Monday and give us a pretty good chance of rain. Take a look at the water vapor loop. We'll show you what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere. You can see the big twist going on here across Texas. There's actually been a uh, trough in the western U.S. where it's been stormy and cooler than normal, except, of course, the desert southwest. And there's been a big ridge here in the southeast, which has kept us dry and warm. That's going to do the flip-flop over the next couple of days. The ridge is going to build back out towards the west, and the trough is going to move back into the eastern United States. So that means some cooler than normal weather as well as a better chance for rain, especially Monday into Tuesday. Right now, boy, no chances of rain around here, but we do have some muggy air coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. Southwest to south winds bringing very muggy conditions. So tonight, we'll probably see some patchy fog and temperatures only getting down into the low and mid 70s. Tomorrow, another hot one around 90 degrees, only a 20, maybe 30% chance of rain north of the lake as we'll have more scattered showers. We're really waiting for this low to track to the east and bring us the best chance of rain coming up on Monday. Here's the highs today. It was a hot one, near 90 from Audubon to Slidell, Folsom, Macomb, over to Baton Rouge. A little cooler down near Boothville Venice High School at the mouth of the river, 82 with 86 in Biloxi. Normally, we should be in the mid 80s. The records are in the low 90s. Right now, temperatures still warm and muggy in the mid upper 70s across the Gulf Coast. Cooler up here in the southern Appalachians where they had some rain and some clouds today, so they've been in the 60s. But you can see just off your map, that's a 57 up there in Amarillo, uh, kind of a sign of things to come by the beginning of next week. Let's take a look at Weatherlink 4. Warm and muggy in Homa as well, 74 degrees. The southwest wind feels like 79. The rest of the city, partly cloudy skies, 76 at the airport, 79 here in the French Quarter, 78 slide L. Humidity is high, 85%. Southwest winds at 8. Tonight, partly cloudy, warm and muggy, patchy fog towards morning. Lows in the lower 70s. Tomorrow, another hot one. Only some scattered afternoon showers or thunderstorms. Highs 88 to 93. Over the next five days, a cooling trend. A one cold front comes through Monday, drops us back to near 80. Wednesday and Thursday, another weak front comes in late Thursday. We should only be right around 80 degrees as we head into next weekend. On the water, southwest winds 10 to 18 knots. Seas 1 to 3 feet. And if you're doing some fishing tomorrow, pretty good water movement. Just under a foot. So temperatures near 80 in late May, that's pretty cool. Our normals are now in the mid to upper 80, so we'll take the cooling trend, but we'd like to see some rain associated with that cooler weather. Just don't see it right now. All right, All right. Brad. Thanks, Brad. Hundreds of NSYNC fans can rest up tonight after a lengthy wait for the band's concert tickets. Ticket sales for the boy band show began early this morning outside the Superdome. Many of the fans camped out in hopes of getting the best tickets possible some even staking out their spots on Monday. The wait was long, but they say it's worth it. Sixth concert, actually. I've been since the very beginning of um, Janet Jackson's tour. I've been to every tour. And I, can't, I can't get enough. They're awesome performers. The Insane concert is on August 22nd. Tickets are still available through Ticketmaster.
The auction of some 73-year-old animation art is on hold for now. Pencil sketches of the first Mickey Mouse cartoon called Plain Crazy are on the auction block. Bidding started tonight at $400,000 and jumped to $800,000, but the sale was stopped because the auctioneers had questions about the credibility of one online bidder. They're now trying to contact the second highest bidder. And ahead in sports, the LSU Tigers are feeling confident heading into tomorrow's tournament championship game. Well, the Green Wave are hoping to play in their tournament championship. Tulane will need a win tonight to reach that tournament finals. I'm Lee Zurich live at Zephyr Field. We'll let you know how the Wave's doing against Memphis coming up next in sports. This eyewitness weather forecast has been sponsored by LIS Rollaway Storm and Security Shutters. Is there a way to get rid of some physical signs of aging without having to worry about permanent marks from surgery? Meg Ferris explores a new facelift procedure that promises youthful results. Monday at 5 on Channel 4. Roses can be very demanding. I'm hot. I'm hungry. I'm just going to wilt. Oh, something's biting my leaf. Now there's Bear Advanced 2-in-1 Rose and Flower Care. It works up through the roots to both feed and protect them from bugs in one easy step. Never go hungry again. Or oh, get nibbled. From Bear Advanced, where better thinking always gives you better results. The Home Builders Association of Greater New Orleans presents the 2001 Parade of Homes featuring newly built homes to fit all price ranges. Saturdays and Sundays from May 19th through June 3rd from 1 to 6 in the afternoon. See 29 homes in 9 subdivisions for sale from 20 of New Orleans' finest home builders. For more information and a Parade of Homes guide, stop by the HBA office at 2424 North Arnold in Metairie or call 837-2700. Come out to the 2001 Parade of Homes, sponsored by Fidelity Homestead Association. So they tell me I have to have heart surgery. I've never been so afraid in my life, but I knew I wanted the best. So I did my homework and found that Oxna is one of the top heart centers in the nation. In fact, they're one of only a few places in the whole country to have done more than 500 transplants. But even more, they develop all this new technology to correct most heart problems without open heart surgery. So who would you trust with your life? Oxna. One heart, one choice. You've seen them tackle work. Now, four Saints players let you in on where they like to spend time off the field. Watch Living the Life, a special edition of Fourth Down, Sunday at 1035 on Channel 4. Looks like a late night for Tulane to try to stay alive. Yeah, if you're a baseball fan, you don't mind staying up late to watch this game tonight. Last Thursday, Tulane coach Rick Jones said win or lose, he wanted his team to play well. He also wanted them to have momentum going into next week's regional. They have that. The Greenies met Memphis for a second time tonight, just one game shy of the championship game. Our Lee, Lee Zurich joins us once again live from Zephyr Field with more, Lee. Hey, Ron, it's been a long day for this Tulane baseball team. They played Memphis this afternoon, a 12-30 ball game. Tulane won that one 7-6, a 13-inning ball game. That sets up another matchup tonight with Memphis. The winner of this game is headed to the Conference USA Championship game. The loser is going home in this tournament. Let's take a look at the highlights from tonight's ball game. Barth Melius and Jay Heinz, the two seniors, missed graduation today. They get their diplomas before the ball game today. Chris Klein, the Salmon High graduate on the mound for Tulane tonight, gets the strikeout bottom of the first, gets some runs. James Juris, the single. John Kaplan scores one to nothing Tulane. We go to the second inning. Back comes Memphis. Tyler Shelton, the RBI up the middle. It brings home Barrett Smith. And that makes it a one-to-one -one ball game. We go to the fourth inning now, and Memphis will take the lead. Ryan O'Neill at the plate, and he will just crush this one to left field. Not a home run, though. Chris White will come home to score. Memphis takes a two-to-one lead, but Tulane comes back. This one right now just beginning the sixth inning of play. Tulane leading Memphis 4-2. to two. Jesuit grad Scott Madden with a two-run single for the Wave. Once again, 4-2 two, Tulane leading in the sixth inning. Whoever wins this game will go on to meet South Florida in the final. South Florida defeats Southern Miss tonight 7-4. to four. So South Florida is in the Conference USA Tournament Championship game. That is how things look. 
The Tulane Memphis winner will go on to meet South Florida tomorrow, a 1 o'clock ball game here at Zephyr Field. The winner of that game will get the automatic bid in the NCAA tournament. Of course, Tulane already has a bid. They will host a regional at Turchin Stadium next week. Once again, though, Tulane leading Memphis 4-2 to two right now in the sixth inning. Live at Zephyr Field, I'm Lee Zurich, Channel 4, Ivan Sports. Juan, back to you. Lee, thanks once again. LSU, well, they continue their dominance in the SEC tournament. Today, it was Tiger outfielder Todd Linden beating down the Rebels. Linden had a career day, this time touching them all. And actually touched them all twice today. First coming in the fourth inning, two run, a three-run shot for Linden. His Rocky gave the Tigers an 8-2 lead in the sixth. Linden once again with the free stroll of the bases. Linden, six RBIs tied the tourney record. LSU wins at 12-6. Now it's time to look ahead to tomorrow's championship game. Uh, yeah, definitely, you know, we got uh, Human starting tomorrow, a great pitcher. You know, come out, get a good uh, quality start from him. Then, you know, we got uh, Scobie, Mestipe, uh, Gidry, David. We have everybody left in the bullpen. And we're coming out to uh, win tomorrow. You know, uh, winning this championship could definitely help us out in the future. Other SEC score tonight. LSU will face Mississippi State in tomorrow's championship game. The Bulldogs shut out South Carolina one to nothing. Meanwhile, the Zephyrs, they continue their series, a four-game set in Memphis tonight, and they pick up the victory five to three. As for their owners, the Astros taking on the Reds tonight. There are new bees in Houston, three killer bees. That would be George Bush, yeah. Jeff Bagwell right here with the home run in the sixth, and that would follow immediately following Lance Berkman, former Zephyr. He also goes yard. Houston get the victory 6-3, your final score. All right, still ahead, two previous NBA champions open their season, their series, their, try that again, their series tonight in San Antonio. Highlights are forthcoming, and could Tiger Woods claw his way back from 10 strokes down in Germany? Find out when we come back. You've seen them tackle work. Now, four Saints players let you in on where they like to spend time off the field. Watch Living the Life, a special edition of 4th Down, Sunday at 1035 on Channel 4. Are there foods that can actually help keep cancer at bay? Boy, fruits and vegetables, I wouldn't, you know, the last thing I'd want to put in my mouth is a fruit. You know, give me the, give me the potato chip. Can a change in eating habits even help patients already fighting the disease? You create yourself every day by what you eat. So you are what you eat. Your mom was right. Karen Swenson examines the current crop of findings in An Ounce of Prevention. Monday at 10 on Channel 4. Preparations are being made. Swings are being perfected. The tournament of the year is nearing. Register today for the 13th annual Sam's Club Golf Classic, Monday, May 21st at Eastover Country Club. Great golf, fun and prizes, and barbecue by the River Shack. All to benefit a great cause, Easter Seals, Louisiana. Call 523-7325 for more information and get ready to play in the 13th annual Sam's Club Golf Classic. Public notice, the end is here. Our time has run out. On this huge quitting business liquidation at Beach Brothers Furniture in La Plaza and Metairie, it's the final days of what might be one of the largest furniture liquidations in recent greater New Orleans history. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of name brands you know and respect now being sold for pennies on the dollar. It's your last chance. Bring your truck and haul away the savings. No reasonable offers will be refused. It's the final days at Beach Brothers Furniture, 1905 West Airline Highway in La Plaza and 3627 Airline Drive in Metairie. At Danny and Class, there's four boys and trail. At Danny and Class, Danny and Class, fill up with gas. Service so fast. Stop on by Danny and Clyde's for Nestle ice cream for just 79 cents. Get 32 ounce Gatorade for only $1.29. Or a roast beef combo for $5.09 with bigger chips and giant drink. Come on down to Danny and Clyde's. A spring sales event at Lexus of New Orleans. Get special savings on RX 300s. Limited edition Coach ES 300s with $2,000 savings. And the IS Lexus for only $3.99 per box. A spring sales event only at Lexus of New Orleans. True NBA followers will argue that this year's championship game won't be pitted against the East and West, but West versus the West. The league's two past champions, L.A. and San Antonio, open their Western Conference Series tonight. The Spurs, of course, have the home court advantage, but the Lakers having their way. Having their way is Kobe Bryant, the dunk right there over Tim Duncan, 60-45. Lakers at that point, Shaquille O'Neal, a huge night, 28 points, 14 boards. 
two and one right there. Bryant was the man tonight. 45 points, three of them right there. Lakers win game one, 90, 80, uh, 104 to 90 is your final score. In golf, Tiger Woods was given two million bucks up front just to play in this week's Deutsche Bank Open. He displayed, the, displayed his value to tournament organizers today because Tiger began the day 10 strokes back, but he quickly clawed his way back in. And after two rounds, this tee shot on 16 goes into the water for Michael Campbell. He was the first and second round leader. Then on number five, the eagle attempt from Tiger. That's an eagle splash from Tiger. He can't believe it. It drops Tiger on 18, a birdie try. He gets it to go. He is within one shot of the lead. Shoots a nine under this afternoon, finishes at 16 under. Other tournaments going on today, Brett Quigley and Phil Mickelson share the lead at the Colonial. Both are 11 under. Wendy Ward has a two-shot lead over both Jennifer Hubbard and Audra Burks at the LPGA Championships. And at the Buy.com's Richmond Open, New Orleans native Kelly Gibson in the hunt. Two strokes off the lead. Chad Campbell and J.J. Henry lead at 15 under par. All right, to Baltimore, and you can forget about having a triple crown winner this year thanks to point given, read by Gary Stevens. The Colt took the lead after a quarter mile and held off both A.P. Ballantyne and Congaree to win the Preakness. Kentucky Derby winner Monarchos finish sixth. And don't forget, Saints living large tomorrow, living the life tomorrow on fourth down. Don't Definitely looking that. forward to that. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Juan. Okay. And coming up, up next, Brad, will have a look at our weather. And the Philharmonic Orchestra closes its 10th season with a spirited performance. We have your front row seats coming up. A spring sales event at Lexus of New Orleans. Get special savings on RX 300s, limited edition Coach ES 300s with $2,000 savings, and the IS Lexus for only $3.99 per box. A spring sales event only at Lexus of New Orleans. When my allergies act up, it just stops my whole day, especially with the added dust on a job site. When I get the red nose and the red eyes, I reach for the red pack. I just feel like a new person. When my allergies act up, it feels like my eyes are a leaky faucet. I do recess duty. There's pollen in the air. I use BC because it's very fast and the allergy problems are gone. When my allergies act up, it feels like I got a fist in my head, pushing, just pushing from the inside. I go and get some BC red. I feel great because that fist is gone. That's good for me. This morning, Cheryl packed herself a new express from your play to have as an afternoon snack. We'll see about that. Cheryl knows that express is a whole new kind of yogurt. She also knows when she's been beat. Three minutes, not too shabby, Cheryl. Rich, creamy, delicious refrigerated or frozen. New express from your play. How long can you resist? The belief that the relationship between a technology provider and its clients is as important as technology itself has made ComTech a leader in data consulting. ComTech helps its clients manage its information systems that run its businesses, both the traditional data and telecommunications solutions, as well as the new e-business and internet-based services. This innovative team of engineers excels at providing local and international clients with custom IT solutions. Technology 2001, from ComTech Industries and Channel 4. seen them tackle work. Now, four Saints players let you in on where they like to spend time off the field. Watch Living the Life, a special edition of Fourth Down, Sunday at 1035 on Channel 4. And Brad's back with the last look at our forecast. Another warm one tomorrow, maybe some scattered showers by the afternoon. Take a look at the outlook starting at 7 o'clock in the morning. We should be in the low 70s on both sides of the lake with some sunshine by noontime. We may see the thunderstorms begin to develop temperatures in the low to mid 80s and by the afternoon temperatures will be near 90 again. So another hot one shaping up. Better chance of rain though coming up Monday. Hopefully. Yes. <laughs>
Finally, the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra closed its 10th season tonight. The orchestra performed Gustav Mahler's Resurrection Symphony, a classic work guaranteeing quite a finale. We leave you with some of that performance. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.